Come on, Yuki, sit down, come here. Sit down, sit down, down, down. Sit down. <laughs> Dogs have always been my friend. I remember my first dog was named Rover, and he and I would take strolls along the river and through the old fields and down the road together. From my earliest memory, when I was three or four years old, I remember one time that my mother became very frightened when she missed me and couldn't find me. She had two smaller children in the house and couldn't uh, uh, locate me. So she started down the road and she went to the school and she went to the river. She went all through the back pasture and I was nowhere to be found. So she went out in the field and got my father where he was working and told her what had happened. And together they looked for an hour for me. And finally uh, my father saw the oats moving waving just a little bit. He tried to determine whether it was the wind blowing them or someone walking through them. The oats were above my head and above Rover's head. And finally he said, I believe uh, there's someone walking in that field over there. And while mother stood and held the baby in her arms, he went where the waving was taking place in the oats. And he found uh, me along with my dog Rover and he asked me why I had left and I had to give an explanation on the spot it was a difficult one I just said Rover wanted to see the country and I wanted him to see it and we've had many dogs uh, during these years now we have Yuki and I think he, I think they saved the best for the last. Uh, he is the friendliest and the smartest <clears throat> and the most constant in his attentions of all the dogs that I've known. He was a wanderer and adventurer too. And he was running along the highway down to Johnson City. And my daughter was coming here for Thanksgiving dinner. And she saw this little dog and she stopped and called him and he ran to the car. She went back to the filling station and said, who does that dog belong to? The man told her he didn't belong to anyone in Johnson City, that he must have just <clears throat> wandered in here or jumped out of someone's car or we have always thought maybe he was with a circus because he was so well trained. So Lucy picked him up and she has a love for dogs too and brought him to me when she came to Thanksgiving dinner. And Yuki's been here ever since. We left word that if the owner ever asked about him to direct him here. But I'm glad that the, the owner never missed him because I surely would if he left me. He's gonna <laughs> well, if you don't get a bath him, and some flea powder. If you don't get some flea powder and a bath, he wants to go in the car. I don't know. You want to go out and ride? You want to go to see the cattle? You want to go see him? Do you? Do you want us to go? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, sing for me. Come on, sing for me. Oh, you silly dog. Speaking about dogs, I, one of my earliest memories of this place, I came here at Christmas time uh, when Judge Martin gave a big Christmas party and he had a box of apples and a big eight by 10 box of peppermint and banana and lemon stick candy. And we had the Christmas tree in by the big fireplace. After we'd eaten all the candy and all the apples that uh, we wanted, 
we came out here and Judge Martin had some bird dogs and he would enjoy in the late evening going up in the, the wooded area and hunting quail and he'd have these bird dogs precede him and they would sniff out the quail and uh, the judge uh, would hunt them. And my little cousin and I conceived the idea that we would get a tin can and fill it full of rocks and close the top of the can and tie it on to the dog's tail. So he got one hound dog and I got the other and we wrapped the bailing wire around his tail and we got the tin can uh, securely fastened to his tail and we turned them loose and they started running the length of the, the lawn and the judge walked out just as this last dog cleared with his tin can that fence over there and he looked at us very disapprovingly and he gave us a little talk I'll never forget what he said he said a dog is loyal and a dog is grateful and a dog appreciates what you do to, for him. And I would think that you boys could at least be as good as my dogs. Said, here I've gone to Fredericksburg, and bought the whole case of apples, and brought them down here and saved them for Christmas for you. I've got your candy. Aunt Frank's baked your cakes. We've gone out and killed a turkey. We invite you to come here and enjoy the Christmas season. And then you go and show your gratitude and your appreciation by tin canning every damn dog you can find on the place. My little cousin went around one side of the house and I went around the other. And I remember I stayed there quite a while crying just thinking about what I had done to Judge Martin's dogs after he'd done so much for us. Daddy, how about telling them about the time uh, uh, Lucy um uh, and, and her little friends who were spending the night with her caught the fish. We had a lot of good people come to visit us through the years. After all, that's a part of home, when you can have your neighbors come in and visit with you, when you can have your friends from afar come by and stay with you. And during the years, there have been some famous personages visit the Pertinalis country. I remember on one occasion we invited the president of Mexico to come here and spend a day or two with us. He accepted the invitation and we went about to trying to make the place ready for him. Ms. Johnson and the people in the house were cleaning the rooms and trying to get them spotless. The men that worked in the yard were mowing the grass. And I tried to think of what the president might enjoy relaxing here a day or two. And someone told me that he liked to fish. So I called upon some of my friends that, in the government that run the fish hatcheries uh, over at San Marcos to get some of the biggest and best fish they had and bring them here to put in my fishing tank. And I gave them the date. And two or three days before the president's scheduled visit, uh, they brought the fish in. We went up and saw them released uh, in the tank. And we had some special food uh, that they liked to eat that the hatchery brought with them. And they were long 10, 12 inch catfish, uh, the pride of any fisherman. And during that time, my daughter Lucy was uh, eight or 10 years old, and she brought some little girls out from school in Austin to visit with her for the weekend, to see the ranch and to see the president. And without my knowledge, they got their fishing poles out and went to our favorite fishing pond. and. Just before the president arrived, they came in one night. Each one had a long string of catfish. And there went the catfish that I'd intended for the president of Mexico. While I was president, we came home to open the birthplace home that had been partially restored. 
and all the natives, the neighbors through the years came down for the opening. It was quite an occasion. And a good many of them uh, had not uh, seen me since I was president. And a friend later related to me that as the Secret Service came in, the band started playing, and the salute was given to the president. Brief ceremony took place, and I left. That one of the old natives uh, looked over at the other one and said, uh, Lyndon sh sure has gone up in the world, hadn't he? And the other one said, yes, yes, he has. He's gone up the road a half a mile. And that's where I started, a half a mile down the road, and this is where I am. Thank <laughs> you.